Hello Gundam Model Kit fans. So we're going to do a really small one today. Uh, this will be my first of the Gundam Artifact line here by Bandai. Bandai owns Gundam, that's why they can make so many random models. They literally own this license. But this is a plastic mini kit. This is uh, from 2021. It's the very first wave and this is the very first model, 001 Rick Dias. Um, and it's been opened but hopefully all the parts are in there. So there's five robots in the wave. I, re I really want to build this because uh, I have a Converge Nightingale and I think it's my favorite Converge figure. But this is a more realistic looking one I guess. But I don't want to screw up that model so I'm going to practice by doing these first. So we're going to do this one today. I will let you know I found in my internet searching there's a website called Gundammit and you can buy a pre a finished model. Uh, it's actually this one uh, for like 110 bucks or something or maybe it's a hundred dollars. And it does look awesome. It's probably worth the money, but this model kit costs a fraction of it. I thought I'd at least try it myself before, you know, maybe I will. I don't know. If I totally mess this up, maybe I will pay someone to do this. A professional. I'm not a professional modeler. All right, so another few honorable pictures. I don't know who did these things, but they're, they look fantastic. I mean, look at this detail, and then you realize that's like a PlayStation controller. This thing looks like a full size, like 144 scale, but it's tiny. It's literally in this person's hand. So, I don't know if I can do so well. Anyways, I was searching on AliExpress, and you can get photo etched detail parts for this whole wave. Uh, so, it even includes decals, as you can see here. There's a the decal probably for the Nightingale, but it has decals for all five of them. They're so small, you can't even really see them here. But uh, see, it says here, uh, model one, two, three, and four, and five. So if you buy this one sheet, uh, you can basically do all five of these with photo etched parts. I'll have to figure that out. Okay, let's open this up. It's already been opened. I thought maybe they're blind boxed at first, but obviously they can't be because it literally says the model on it. So I'm not really sure why the person would have opened this. Maybe they opened it and they realized they didn't have time to to make it, and that's why they sold it off. All right, we're not uh, gonna expect the most difficult build here, except for it's just really small, right? So the typical instructions, you don't need to read English or Japanese to put it together. You just need to be able to make out shapes. That's it, just one page. And then, yeah, <laughs> that even includes this gum. Uh, you know, I might even chew. No, look at that, it's got some brown stains going on, so. For a moment, I thought I'd chew, I'd start chewing on it, but I okay, guess some scissors here. Let's just take a look at these uh, pieces here. So we have three three runners. It's got this standardized like resin kit kind of color to it, meaning like a tan color or darker cream color. They have other ones where they're clear red or green. But uh, since I'm going to repaint this, it just doesn't matter. I think it'd be easier to paint an opaque plastic than a clear plastic, you know, because the light's going to get through it. So, yeah, pretty nice details, as one would expect from Bandai. Uh, I mean, look at the, the fingers on the hand here. That's, that's pretty good, right? Very, very nice. Uh, let's see, all sorts of nooks and crannies, so you can get some panel line detailing in there. Yeah, that's a really thin panel gap. Okay, the feet I guess. And the back side, yeah, just pins and... Being a Bandai, I don't think you need to glue these, but you're gonna have gaps between the, uh, the halves of the feet and the halves of the legs. So I am gonna probably glue them and also even add putty to fill up the gap. I want to, my goal is to make mine to look like one of these photographs, but <laughs> we'll find out. We'll see what happens. It might end up being a disaster. Yeah, extra hands over here, really small. I mean, this is my, that's <laughs> really small stuff. All right, I'm also curious how they're going to end up in relation to size compared to a Converge figure. I have this model in by uh, the Bandai Converge line, so we'll see what it looks like. All right, well, I'm not going to make you watch me pay, take these off here, but I'm assuming these parts belong 
on the AliExpress listing, they literally had photographs of uh, the instructions for this. So I'll have to do that. All right, well, I'll probably uh, put this to some music, maybe even fast forward it, not sure, and then we'll see what happens.
All right, so we're back after a very long build. Uh, I'll talk about the build later. First thing I want to do is check the scale. So here I'm on fandom, and uh, the Rick Dias is commonly shown in a black and gray color scheme, but also red and uh, red as well. Uh, let's see, 21.6 meters is the overall height. Oh, head height is 18 meters, so I think I can measure that pretty easily. So 18,000 millimeters. Let's see, 18,000 millimeters. And just bust out the calipers and measure up to the head here. So that's zeroed out, right? Zero. It's uh, 57, I would say. Yeah, some play. So 18,000 divided by 57. This is 1 315 scale, somewhere in that ballpark. I guess 1 300 might be a, a good number to go by. Alright, so here's some images from that same website. These are the two colors I'm familiar with. And then I did, didn't even realize it was a green color. And then this is a nice red metallic. Alright, uh, let's put this aside for now and just talk about some of the things I ran into during the build because I didn't even film everything in my build. If I had to guess, I spent a good 20, at least 20 hours making this tiny little thing. You would think something this small would be pretty quick to build, but when once you paint stuff and detail stuff, uh, yeah, it, time adds up. Like, I did this over the course of three days, and it, maybe four days actually, and like sometimes I'd work eight hours straight working on this thing. It was pretty crazy, but if you look at the thing, it actually has, you know, a lot of details. It pretty much looks like a high-grade kit in miniature form, but maybe even better because I bought the photo etch uh, parts. Uh, okay, so let's see. Actually, I'll just hold it close to the camera. So there is some articulation here, standard by by Bandai. Uh, the head, you know, that can rotate, but. All these articulation things, they want you to build it before you paint it. So if you do watch some of my video, I clipped off many of the pieces because I wanted to paint the parts separately. Uh, so the joints have clippings where the flanges are. And so I can actually pull this head out. I can pull, the shoulders are standard to come in and out, but the uh, forearm twist here, that's supposed to be locked in place permanently up here. And so here, uh, I clipped off a bunch of plastic and you know that allows me to actually still articulate it but i painted the arm a different color than the, the shoulder all right but it does mean that uh you know i have some wobbliness but i guess in a way that's good because i can pose it better all right so i have the hand articulating as well uh that's just standard but you know i put it in after the fact instead of before painting Hopefully that makes sense. One place where things went really weird is the, this gun. The way it's mounted, uh, this wrist is so far twisted by the instructions, and I didn't, I didn't put it in upside down. It's just a really strange mold where it was colliding with the body so much, and so I didn't want to scratch the paint, so I ended up tr breaking the hand off and re-gluing it in a different place where I can actually have a little bit of a gap between the body and the gun but it's just a strange position that it's holding the gun you know one would think it'd be more straight or even more down but it's almost like I don't know it's just I it's a weird way for it to hold the gun I did glue this uh, arm into that shoulder so this arm will not twist because I didn't want it to a again scratch the uh, body all right the legs I glued in place as well because when I trimmed off the stuff. It was so wobbly that when I put it on a table, it was it wasn't sitting straight. So what I did is I just held both. I put crazy glue on the leg tops, and then I held it down straight, and then I let the crazy glue set. And now, you know, when I put it down, it's uh, going to stand properly. The only issue is uh, the back weight makes it really want to fall over very easily. You know, it, see it topples. So I'm going to end up putting it on a, a base. Alright, um, 
what else? Well, the back, speaking of that, these things can articulate, they can rotate. You saw this gun come out, maybe I'll have to glue this in place because it obviously came out too easily. But while it's out, I guess I can show you the details of it. So there's uh, the photo etch part. Yeah, all the photo etch parts are crazy glued in place. Uh, just add some silver. And then that photo etch part has all the decals and they're marked uh, by robot number. So Rick Dias is the number one in the, the series. So I actually took that decal and put it on the foot so I know where it stands in the overall uh, line of artifact models. Okay, so yeah, I think it's really, I mean, without the decals and the photo etch, it, it would be an okay model, but once you add those tiny details, this I think that that's really what makes it look so nice, uh, and there's no way you could ever paint, you know, this text, because it's so small, it, it's, yeah, it's really crazy how small these details are. Uh, one other thing here is the eye. That was just a piece of plastic, you know, you're supposed to paint. I drilled it out and I added a little jewel bead. Um, I didn't have a green one that small, so I just went with yellow, something that's really bright. Yeah, I w ideally it would be green, but... And then uh, I'm not sure if you're picking it up as I move it around. There, there are two different photo shift colors on this thing. I really wanted it to be pink, but the Vallejo paint wasn't marked properly. It said pink, but it looks green to me. Yeah, I don't. Anyways, one is a purplish shift here, like on the shoulder. That's purple. Maybe that's purple pink. But this this one here is supposed to be pink also. But to me, it looks like a green. Eh, maybe there, it's a little purple. I don't know. So I basically con you know, skipped everything where this is purple, the green, purple, green, purple, green, you know, green, right? But they're uh, kind of similar. So I wish the color contrast was a little bit more obvious, but hopefully you can tell. Um, the photo edge parts, yeah, some of them I painted, but the paint doesn't want to stick to, you know, such a smooth piece of steel. Uh, so like that little red already came off as I was applying it to that thing. Uh, yeah, these, all these joint photo edge pieces, I put a little brown paint wash on them because they, they looked a little too shiny in stock form. So I added some paint wash. And there's also one in here with a lot of paint wash because I think that's like a vent or a thruster. Even also in the back here of the skirt. Uh, there you go. Where's my toothpick? It's right here, sorry. Uh, and then I add some jewels in the photo etch back in these thrusters here. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. So, I I'm really impressed with the, the amount of details that was molded in here by Bandai. You know, it's very much like a Converge, but instead of a Converge figure, this is hard plastic like a Bandai kit. Whereas Converge has a lot of uh, soft PVC vinyl. So in fact, let's compare it to a, a few other Bandai products here. Alright, this is uh, from something called the Minifigure Selection. And, and these are, I think, claimed to be 1400 scale. So you can see the difference between 1400 and 1315. It's pretty significant. And then we have the Converge figures here. This is the black version. This is actually a secret chase. And in Converge, it's number 64 in the overall Converge lineup. And here's the normal version, which is the red version. <coughs> so, yeah, I think, uh, well, let's get this one out. The Converges in this model kit seem to fit together well as far as overall height goes. It's just that converges are, are deformed, so they look very, very cartoony, right, and cuter. Whereas this looks much more lean and mean, but it's still cute just because it's the, the overall size is so small. I mean, this is, here are my fingers, right? So, it's a tiny little guy. And the converges are very, they're mostly always uh, matte finish paint. And then they obviously lack a lot of paint details because they're pretty cheap 
cheap toys. Uh, this Converge figure costs less than this model kit at original price, I believe. All right, let's check it a little bit closer. Uh, I can't even focus. All right. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm happy to have these model kits, and if you like this kind of stuff, stay tuned because I will make all the other ones that uh, have been put out so far in the Artifact line. It's just that these things are so time consuming, uh, <laughs> it's not, I'm not going to do them all this month, that's, that's for sure. It might take a year for me to get around to all of them. I may also try some other faster methods like uh, in the world of wargaming I've been watching some videos and they have something called the slap chop method where they paint miniatures <coughs> miniatures much faster so maybe I'll try that in one of the one of the models and we'll see how, how it ends up I'm gonna guess it's gonna end up a lot worse so that's I may not do it at all thank you for thank you for watching today I'll see you in the next model kit build